Everyone builds in Minecraft, and being so customizable, it's probably the most complex part of the game. So learn 20 building tips and tricks to level up your Minecraft creations. There's a lot of different ways of making vertical transportation inside of Minecraft. You could use maybe scaffolding or ladders, and although these are decent options, one option that I think is even better is to make a one block wide staircase. Basically all you have to do is look down, place a trapdoor, then turn 90 degrees and do the same thing, turning, placing, turning, placing, so you're basically going 90 degrees and placing these in a spiral pattern. And once you've done that, then simply right click on your way down and you'll notice these will go in a a spiral shape and once we get to the bottom of this we actually have a one block wide staircase so it's as easy as jumping on the side of these and getting higher and higher by basically walking on the edge of these staircases you can even fall all the way down through the center so if you place a water block at the bottom you can have a functional staircase that goes up and down if you're looking for different build ideas one really cool one is to take a existing structure in the game so for instance right here we have a dark oak tree and then to level it up. And inside we have this really large area. And so although it was originally based on the dark oak tree, it's quite a bit different. And we now have this really interesting base design. And you could apply this to a lot of different things. Or let's say building yourself a massive jungle tree and then living there. You could even apply this to different villager house designs. Or to the mushrooms that can generate around. Where just like this dark oak tree, we have this really large and wide trunk. And at the top, the more flat area of leaves. And the best part of this was something like a tree. Is you you could even take the sapling that this tree type comes from and use it as an icon for your base as they should look fairly similar. Here's a great build idea if you're bored and that is to make a giant skin statue. Now these can be done of course with any Minecraft skin you want. So for instance over here we have this one of a slime in a suit and these tend to be that every single pixel on the Minecraft skin will translate into one block placed. And over here we can even see a skin statue of my skin where of course they have this and the lab coat and the purple tie and all that. I did this in a survival world of mine quite a while ago, and you can for instance see this massive skin statue, although this is where my skin used to have the blue pants on it, and you can even have an entrance into it and have things inside. And although I didn't really do much inside of here, you could technically make it into your base, where you're literally living inside of your Minecraft character. So with this one, we could have it let's say holding a trident or a sword, honestly whatever you want, but it's a very great build idea that I think can definitely add a lot to different Minecraft creations. If you want what you're building to have a lot more detail and be a lot more realistic, the best idea is to add gradients. For instance, on this build right here, we can see quite a bit of gradient, because basically it starts at the bottom with these stripped warped logs, but then it goes into some of the warped wart blocks, and also starts to be mixed in with the warped planks. And gradients can really be in any form, but it's more or less blocks that look similar to each other next to other blocks that look similar to those, kind of slowly changing from one type of block to another. So for an example right here, this is a really popular gradient recently, which is one that goes from grass blocks into stone blocks. And you can see here it goes from grass, and then from there it actually goes into moss blocks. And now we have glow lichen on top of moss blocks, then the moss blocks go into a mossy cobblestone, and from the mossy cobblestone into standard cobblestone, then into andesite, and then of course into stone. A really common type of build in Minecraft is a bridge. But the big question is, how would you make these railways look more realistic? And so the best idea for sure is to add large supports to your bridges. And ideally the best thing to do would be to make them as realistic as possible. So for instance right here, this actually does have realistically enough support to keep this bridge afloat. So that it looks good while you're on it, but also on the side. You can see it from a distance, and it has that supported arches to it, and also the columns lining up. And that's really one of the biggest tricks in terms of making Minecraft builds look good, is to have them make sense. So even this bridge here, although it's maybe not as big, we still have those supports there, which definitely makes it look a lot nicer than, let's say, that floating bridge. Generally, the trick when making these is to have occasional pillars, and then to have large archways between them, just as you would see in a bridge 
in real life. If you've been creating a lot of different builds in your Minecraft world, but there seems to be an issue with the way they look, well, it could be that there's not enough coherence across your builds. One of the biggest things that people will sometimes forget when they're creating a lot of different things is to have all their builds seem to be in the same style. But this is a great example of them all being in the same style. These are all made with the nether wart blocks as well as the shroom lights and the polished basalt. And going over to this area, you can see it's the exact same situation with the same building style and materials. In fact, these builds are so stylistically similar, it can actually be hard to tell which building is which or if they're sort of meant to be copied off of each other but that's exactly what you want because then when you have this kind of look it's really easy to see what builds are associated with each other now there's a lot of ways of making a realistic build in minecraft but other than let's say just using different combinations of blocks like right here to make it more of a pattern so it looks cool what you want to do is add the idea of functionality for instance right here we have these anvils which are meant to represent weights connected to a chain on this support here that goes to a chain over here and with the connection in the center you can see this is actually meant to be a drawbridge where basically these weights would go down, the central part of the bridge would open, and these two sides would open up, so that of course if this was real life, big boats could enter underneath, or they could maybe stop invaders from going onto the bridge. And you can even see that all over this build, for instance that lamp on the chain there, connected to those wood supports, kind of gives the idea that this light could be moved up and down, and so adding what would look like functionality to your build is a great idea. And the next building tip and trick is to add tiny details with tiny items. So of course some things in Minecraft that are solid blocks, it's kind of hard to add tiny details with something like this. Just because it's so large, you can't really do that. However, there are certain blocks in the game which make this way easier. And the biggest examples are definitely buttons, trapdoors, fences, as well as fence gates. Here's a great example of this, something that makes this look really really cool, is these open fence gates right here. Because they do seem to connect up to the block over here, it gives us this look of there being these very tiny little supports, because we sort of start looking at this fence gate as being two small pieces, one over here and one over here, and so because of that, it makes this build look way cooler. We can even see over here we have these trapdoors that are supported by the fence gates, they're then supported by the fences, again all these very small details are what make this look good. One of the biggest issues that many people have with Minecraft is this, basically the fact that farms and builds kind of do not really go together. So for instance, this very functional mob farm here is really ugly, as of course it's this massive strange looking cobblestone build in the sky. However, something really great is that you can actually make this not be the case. So for instance, we have this beautiful base area here, and there's something you may notice, is this really awesome looking hot air balloon build in the sky. But what makes this even better is the fact that it's actually a mob farm. So if we go up to this hot air balloon and enter inside of it, you can see what's actually going on. There is a mob farm inside of this hot air balloon build. As if we break into here, we can take a look at this mob spawning area. Like for instance, there's that creeper right here. In fact, this is a creeper farm. We have this beautiful looking hot air balloon that actually doubles as a working creeper farm. If you're trying to create realistic looking plants and sort of gardeny areas inside of Minecraft, the biggest thing I would suggest is using the set of lush cave blocks to design it. So for instance, in this sort of Greek looking village here, we have these large arbors with different plants, and they're created using the azalea leaves, flowering azalea leaves, vines, then of course the actual azalea bush, as well as the moss block and the glowberries that create the cave vines. And because of this one build element throughout this area, we have these beautiful plants that go all around these builds. And the nice thing about it too is because these blocks are really similar, you can kind of mold them into looking like whatever you want them to. So for instance, you could make some kind of customized azalea trees by let's say putting some of these vines off of them, because the great thing is they merge so much with each other as they're all from the same biome, you could honestly imagine that these are all from the same plant. Now this chain looks amazing, and I think that most people would agree with that, but the question would be what makes this look so good? And it's the fact that it's so large, and it also accurately represents 
represents what a chain would look like. And so a really good trick to do is to mess around with scale and builds to make those builds look much more realistic. So for instance with this chain, although of course you could technically use the chains that are already in Minecraft, having this absolutely massively scaled chain makes it be so much more realistic and look so much better. You can see that first they're built out of the black stone, black concrete, dark gray concrete as well as the polished deep slate, and they're basically built like a chain would be in the right shape, interlocking with each other, and even very tightly connecting to each other like a chain would be if it's underweight. And if we look at it from the side, you can see after this first section, it then starts to be more angled, and this gives it this look of being sort of holding a heavy weight. If we take a look at this build over here, a good question would be, what makes this build look good? And of course, there's a lot of different reasons, but I would say the biggest one in my opinion is actually this pattern right here on the wall, and that leads us into this really good building trick, which is to use log type blocks as much as you can. Now the reason why is fairly simple, and it's because they can be placed in every single orientation. Unlike let's say a dirt block or a grass block, they're always going to sort of face the same way, but with a log block you can have them facing any direction you want. And so that means you can make really awesome patterns with them. So for instance, to make the pattern that's right there, start by placing a block, then skipping a block like this, then place them in between here by putting them on the sides that they're angled towards that side, and then place blocks facing upwards again, then blocks to the side. And what this more or less does is it makes this sort of checkerboard shape of blocks that are facing upwards and blocks that aren't. If you want to add extra detail to a build, a great idea to do that with is banners, especially since they can add so much information to something. So for example right here we can see there is this battle arena, and it's made much better by these sort of skull and crossbones banners that are around. Not only do they sort of show us that this is not just meant to look like an interesting four biomes display, but it's actually a fighting arena. However, also we have the look of them of course being quite menacing, and so they add information and also style to the build. And the great thing is you can do this for really anything you want. So let's say right over here we have this gunpowder farm, and something we could do to make it look a lot better is to make a creeper face banner, then just put that banner with a corresponding blank banner of the same color in the crafting grid to duplicate it a bunch, and now we can use this to decorate it. I would say definitely this gunpowder farm is looking a lot better when we have these creeper faces all around it. Some players will find it really easy to build exteriors of builds, but much more difficult to build interiors. However, it is fairly easy to make good interiors in your Minecraft builds. The biggest thing I suggest is to create small builds and then reuse them as sort of another building piece. So for example right here we have this small build with one cauldron and two flowering azalea leaves, and over here the same thing is repeated again, and so these are around the build. Another thing you can do is to make a small cabinet, like let's say this one right here. We have these looms turned to the side to look like empty bookshelves along with full bookshelves, a potion right there, a potted azalea bush, a lantern, and a bookshelf sticking out. Here you can see there's this other cabinet that has armor inside of it, and so basically what this builder did is they took the idea of a cabinet right here and copied it over into this room as well. So we have that sort of coherent idea that these are both cabinets, you know, sort of in real life, they might be the same brand. If you're ever bored and are not sure what to build in Minecraft, one of the coolest things is to build pixel arts of things in and outside of Minecraft. So for instance, right here, we have this absolutely massive axolotl build. In fact, it's so big, it's actually kind of hard to see the fact that it is fully to scale and realistic. But you can see if we go further away, we actually do have this really awesome looking giant axolotl. Building things like this in a world can definitely make them look awesome. And although this person didn't, you could have inside of here a whole lot of axolotls, or let's say if it's a giant cow, have your cow farm inside of it, really whatever you want to have really awesome builds all across your world. You could even do this for pixel art. So for instance right here we have these massive pixel arts of Sonic characters, which again can be a really interesting build idea in your world, is to create massive pixel arts of different things, a really awesome thing to make builds look better, and maybe even to plan builds around, is to to use maps. So for instance right here you can see this map of this absolutely huge Minecraft island.
island, and of course we could even have a map building for that, or let's say smaller scale maps like this one that only shows the area around us. But there's also another strange way you can use maps inside of Minecraft, and that is as pixel art. Here's an example right here. This may look like just sort of a strange looking area made out of carpets, however in reality if we make a map of it, well it's actually a Chick-fil-A fast food logo. Now of course you can do this with anything you want that doesn't have to be Chick-fil-A, but no matter what you have that map look like, what's really cool is you could then use it as not really a map, but sort of a piece of art or a custom painting. So for instance you could have one of let's say your character, or maybe the name of something, and you could kind of use it as a sign to mark out certain things as your own. Another really good idea, if you're struggling for ways to decorate the interior of your builds, especially if they're let's say a small build, is to use single block pre-made decorations. And what I mean for that is things like scaffolding. Like let's say right here, this one piece of scaffolding sitting down there is the roll of a table. And it does look like it of course, because we have the four legs of the table there and the top of it. Another example of this would be like over here, we have this loom next to the smoker and the barrel, and then also this chest on top of a trapdoor and this bookshelf on top of a trapdoor. Although these are quite simple, they definitely give us the decorations that we need to make this look like an interesting and full interior. The same right here with our little bedside table with the lamp on top and the chest. These are just placed there for decoration, but they look really good. And all across this build, you can see this technique being used. If you're finding that most of what you're building is looking boring and bland, a big thing that I would suggest is using stained glass as well as dyed wool. This house right here is an amazing example of what you can do if you use the right types of colored blocks. So for instance, over here, we can see this area looks really colorful and bright. Over here, we have the different blue glasses mixed with green in the carpet as well as in the window. And then over over here it's similar, but this place is supposed to be smelting and also crafting, and so to symbolize that there's purple on the roof to sort of look magical, there's also this kind of fiery looking window and flame looking carpet. The great thing about this too is when you look out of stained glass, of course the color of what you're looking at changes. So let's say over here things are going to look more yellow or more orange or maybe more red, and so because of that you can make what's outside look really bright and colorful. What can be difficult when you're building in Minecraft is to keep the the entire build to sort of stay theme consistent. That is, let's say if it's a medieval build like this one here, what are actual practical ways that we can make the entire build seem to be medieval? Well, as an example in this build right here, it's been done quite well, and you'll notice here as we walk through the build, there is these two iron armor stands on every single floor, and around those armor stands are different items. What you basically see is that this is made to look like each of these stations is very medieval. So for instance, these armor stands blend in well with the stone cutter and the potted tree there, which basically makes the crafting table and the chest here blend in really well. Same with down here, the brewing stand itself doesn't necessarily look medieval, but combining it with the cauldron here, as well as the deep slate tiles, it's sort of made to look like each one of these stations is truly medieval. The big question would be what makes this base look so good other than the fact of how large it is. I'd say the biggest thing is the fact that the colors in this build are matched really well. So for instance right here, we have like this greenhouse garden growing area, and it's made out of these black stone bricks, as well as a small amount of deep slate and the black stained glass, and altogether it makes that black stained glass look almost entirely invisible because it is next to those dark blocks. There's even certain designs here like let's say this light pattern which do look incredibly amazing, but again one of the coolest things with it is its reliance on color, as you can see this sort of yellowish light here contrasts with this, and this color right here contrasts with this. Well, there's also the cave vines that are usually found in lush caves. Now this color is kind of a lime green, and that means it contrasts perfectly with this right here, which is of course the crimson plank color. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed those 20 building tips and tricks. All these builds were on season 1 of my Minecraft SMP, and feel free to join my Discord server if you want to know about if you want to join season 2 of that SMP, which is going on right now. And so of course a big thank you to everyone whose builds featured in this. I will see you in the next video and I hope you have a great day. Goodbye!